Hi, my name is Larry, and I'm one of the third-year medical students here at Turo.com. So I'd like to welcome you guys to Turo, and I'm just going to give you guys a brief introduction of OMM. So OMM is going to be a little bit different from all your other classes, because with OMM, not only are you going to have to learn the theory of it, but you're also going to learn a lot more application. You're going to learn what to do and how to do things in terms of putting the body in positions of ease or manipulating the muscles in a certain way to help with somatic dysfunctions. So the first question that usually comes up in OMM is, what is a somatic dysfunction? Or even just, what is OMM or what is OMT? Well, when, it come, when we think about OMM, what we're doing is we're going to look at the human body. We're going to find certain dysfunctions within the human body, and then we're going to treat it. So when it comes to OMM, there's a special term for this, and this term is called somatic dysfunction. And so what is a somatic dysfunction? Well, there are four criteria for what a somatic dysfunction is, and it's written right here. The first one is tissue texture change, the next one is asymmetry, then restriction, and then finally tenderness. This spells out tart. So a really easy way to remember it is every single time you look at some uh, at a body and you're looking for some axis functions, just say tart to yourself and look for tissue texture changes, look for asymmetry, look for restrictions of motion. So by restriction, we mean there's some sort of restriction in the way it moves, and I'll explain that in a second. And finally, look for tenderness. And that's going to be obviously not an objective finding, but it's going to be a subjective finding because you're going to palpate places in the body, and the patient's going to tell you whether or not it's tender. Now, when it comes to somatic functions, I want you guys to think of it as just two types of somatic functions. There are acute ones, and then there are chronic ones. There are going to be acute findings, and there are going to be chronic findings. So look at this person here on the left. Let's imagine this is his back, and let's imagine this is his left side right here, and that's his right side right there, and let's just draw in his spine, okay? And now let's imagine that what we're looking for right now is we're looking for whether or not there's any kind of somatic dysfunctions in the paraspinal tissue, okay? Okay, in the paraspinal muscles. So we're going to examine, whoops, we're going to examine right here, and we're going to examine right here. We're going to examine the muscles right there. So to look for somatic dysfunctions, first we look at the tissue. Is that tissue warm and moist? If it is, then it's some sort of an acute change. If we look at the tissue and we notice that it's cool and fibrotic, it's going to be some sort of chronic change. So this tells us the time frame. It tells us when the somatic dysfunction first arose. If you notice the tissue texture changes are warm and it's moist, it's edematous, uh, you notice that uh, a lot of times, um, besides being warm, the muscles are hypertonic, then you know that this happened in a relatively short, brief period of time. I'm, well, it happened not too long ago, like maybe in the last hour or in the last few days, okay? There's an acute change. But if you notice that the tissue, instead of being warm and red and moist, then it's kind of white. It's kind of cool and fibrotic, and you often hear the word blanching. When you see it, it kind of has like a white blanching kind of feel to it. Then you know that these changes, instead of happening you know, maybe a few days ago, might have happened a few weeks ago, or maybe a few months or even years ago. So by looking at the tissue texture changes, you can tell whether or not it's acute or if it's chronic. Same thing with asymmetry. So let's imagine you're looking at the spine, and let's imagine that spine is asymmetric. Let's say it kind of looks like that, and there's a little bit of like a scoliosis there. Obviously, it's a little bit, um, <laughs> quite a lot of bit exaggerated right there. Well, in both acute and chronic, the asymmetry will be present. However, with chronic, we can get compensation. So what do we mean by compensation? Well, your body really doesn't like to have a C-curve in the spine, okay? What it's gonna make it is, it's gonna make it into an S-curve because you can kind of think of the top of it if it's bent too far to the left. The bottom of the uh, curve is gonna bend further to the right in order to compensate. So instead of the curve looking like that, what if the curve started looking like this S-shape? Then it's a compensated curve. And then we would know that that's more of a chronic change. However, if we see the asymmetry doesn't have as much compensation, then maybe it's an acute type of change. So that's a second criteria for somatic function. The third criteria is going to be for restrictions and restrictions of motion. So let's imagine that this guy right here, let's imagine that he is bending, side bending towards the left. And let's say he can side bend and reach his arm all the way up to here. Let's say on the right side, he tries to side bend towards the right. And he could only side bend to here. 
Okay, it's not as far as he can side bend to the left. Then he would have restriction of motion when side bending to the right. And his freedom will be side bending to the left. And when you see that there are restrictions there, that means a somatic dysfunction is there. It's the third criteria for somatic dysfunction. And when it comes to acute, you tend to have more painful restrictions and uh, um, painful with movement. And with chronic, you tend to have either less pain with restrictions because the body is compensated, or sometimes you might even have no pain at all. Okay. And finally, tenderness. Um, let's say you're palpating in certain areas. Let's say you palpate uh, right here, and the patient tells you, "Ooh, you know, doctor, it really, really feels, it really hurts right there, or it really is tender right there." Then um, more likely you're going to have some sort of an acute problem because if it's a sharp pain, if it's a severe pain then we see an acute problem. And if you feel, if it's a dull pain, if it's kind of an achy pain or even a kind of burning pain, then it's more of a chronic problem. So when it comes to OMM, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to try to spot the somatic dysfunctions. And the first few weeks of OMM really is that, is to try to learn to spot the somatic dysfunctions. And when you think of somatic dysfunctions, think of TART, go through the T, go through the A, go through the R, go through the T, and look for either acute changes or chronic changes. And once you get that, you're halfway done. Okay? If you guys have any questions, you can email me at lhuang3 at student.turo.edu. All right, thanks, thanks a lot. See you later.